Hey there, everyone. Whitney Harding here with you and Joe Nugent coming to you from the NBC 4i Digital Desk. And we are going to talk about the Columbus crew because everybody should be talking about the Columbus crew right now after what they did down in Monterey. I mean, Joe, honestly, let's face it, they scored four goals in total. One, unfortunately, <laughs> went um, the wrong direction. Um, that was just, man, bad luck uh, to begin with. But you know, MLS teams have had this tradition of dumb goals when they play teams down in Mexico. So I think the consensus after that was, all right, they got the, the dumb one out of the way. Now let's go. Yeah. I mean, the self-inflicted wounds. I think we also <laughs> saw, saw it at the start of the game against Tigres where, mm -hmm. you know, they're a little, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't great. But uh, man, they're, they're so good at overcoming that, you right. know, and it happens right out of the gate. So you still have 80 minutes or so, 75 minutes to go. Yeah. So it was really impressive. It, it's interesting, you know, as we all watched it, and you're like, oh, geez, I don't know. You know, yeah. at least for me, I'm like, oh, it's not a good start. No. But these guys, they're not phased at all no. about a bad start. No, and I thought I think what was so frustrating, too, about that was clearly after Monterey scored that goal, because that was all that they needed, man, the pace of the game just died. And it was so slow. And I'm sitting there going, oh, my gosh, this is – like the time just ticking away and it was just the first half, but still you could feel it. And if there was anybody to score that kind of, I don't know, in hockey, it would be kind of an ugly goal, you know, just kind of like somehow goes in in front of the net. But if anybody were to score a goal like that in soccer, it'd be Aiden Morris. It, it was Pure so, hustle. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was so interesting because obviously the, the pass by the goaltender from Monterey was not good. No. And then he all of a sudden found himself in this position with mm -hmm. the ball, you know, obviously dribbling toward the net. He's about 25 yards out and he's like yeah. trying to like figure out what to do with the ball. And <laughs> yeah. Oh, Kucho was offside. He's like, well, I guess I'll shoot it. Right. You know, it was kind of funny. Like it, it was. wasn't, it didn't even feel like it was really what he wanted to do, but it mm -hmm. was the only option and it obviously worked out great. I think it was karma because he had just gotten kicked in the head. Yeah. <laughs> There was like nothing called on it. And granted, I mean, maybe I'm just bitter from other of these matches I've watched in the CONCACAF Champions Cup, but I feel like anybody, it would have been the red card if it was the other way around, but whatever. Um, but clearly that goal changed everything. And then Wilfried Nancy made the brilliant move um, coming out of halftime to sub in Alex Matan for some creativity, you know, a little bit more of intricate passing. And that's literally what he did. Yeah. I mean, the goal that uh, the second goal that they scored early mm -hmm. in the second half, I mean, it wasn't like they were down there deep in Monterey's end by any stretch. I mean, that came from, you know, 50, 60 yards away. Yeah. They put it together. It came together fast, dribbled into open space, made the pass, boom, goal, boom. You're up two to one. And then, of course, the Jason Russell Rogel near the end just put was the icing on the cake. And uh, something I don't know if people really saw watching the match once it was over Monterey was so angry and so frustrated. Yeah. They actually got a red card once the match was over. Well, I crazy. Okay, I, I didn't. I, so I was listening on the radio at that point, driving home. Yeah, I heard that there was also a situation with Christian Ramirez, right, apparently right before that, where the announcer thought there was going to be a red card. Yeah. So it must have been really chippy uh, yeah. at the end. It was. It was really chippy at the end, which was expected, the way that things ended here. You know, yeah. the Monterey coach wouldn't shake Wolfried's hand. Um, I don't know if maybe he thought it was kind of like you see in – these hockey best of sevens where you don't shake hands till the very end, or I don't know. But Wilfried was kind of like, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know what's going yeah, on there. That's um, clearly, they thought they were going to win that match down in Mexico because, well, let's face it, they always had. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. the thing about this. It's been 15 years since an MLS team has advanced to the Concacaf Champions Cup final by winning on the road yeah. against a Mexican team, and no one's done it against Monterey. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ever. Okay. Ever. So, yeah. The crew tried and they failed last time. Okay. Crazy. So, yeah, I mean that to me that's what's most interesting about this. I was um actually over the weekend I was talking to somebody who's from Mexico. Yeah, obviously he's a big soccer fan and he says that hey man, MLS is better than Liga MX. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, Liga MX has 3 of the final 4. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's also better, you know, the, the Liga in Mexico has been around for 50 more years oh, yeah. than MLS. But 
And that's just the league, not the teams. Like some of those teams have been around. Yeah, that's true. For like, I think Pachuca has been around like 100 years, something has crazy it? like that. I no. mean, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it's wild. It, it, it really is. It, it feels like um, there's potentially a shift happening here. Mm-hmm. And with the World Cup coming to the United States yeah. in two years, I mean, remember what happened with soccer in the 90s when it came here. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why we have MLS today. Yes. And the owners of these teams now want to once again, you know, take a massive step. You know, I don't know if they can make one as big as creating a league, right. but but they want to take full advantage of it. And sure. that might swing things more toward these MLS teams versus the Liga MX teams. Yes. And I think it also is like this – this Columbus crew tr- crew team right now, I think we need to really sit back and enjoy some of this yeah. because it is becoming too early to say dynasty, but this is a team that is just, they just win. They just win. I mean, I know that Wilfried Nancy signed the extension, but it's going to be hard to keep him. Yeah. It's going to be hard to keep Patrick Schulte. It's going to be hard to keep so many of these guys on um, talent and money because they're doing so well. I mean, this this is where, you know, the decisions will be made. Yeah. You know, how much are the owners in MLS going to invest in the teams, when, especially when you're at the crew and you have all of a sudden, you know, a head coach who's going to be wanted, a goalkeeper yeah. who's going to be wanted. You know, how does ownership to rea- react to that situation? Yeah. I think it's going to be very, very interesting. And by big teams. Like, I'm not talking about other MLS teams. Yeah. I'm talking, you know, Premier League yeah. Arsenal, Manchester's, like those kinds of places, there are already rumors about them looking at some of these crew players, Patrick Schulte, and it is going to be interesting to see how the, not just, like you said, not just the teams, but the MLS in general, how they work this through and say, oh, we maybe we finally got something here. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so the crew was going to play Pachuca in um, Mexico June 1st. It was originally scheduled June 2nd. We were talking about this. Yeah. I got curious. I looked it up. So June 2nd is election day in Mexico. The reason from what I've been able to read that maybe they moved this match is they did not want to have it on election day because security and um, people they're going to need around the match, they need for election day because there's already been so much, what's the word? I don't want to be pushing buttons here. Um, controversy. Okay. There it is around this Mexico election that happens only every six years. So we talked about maybe why they, that's why they've moved the match to June 1st now. Yeah. I, and I was, I was actually over at lower.com field earlier today. We talked about it a little bit and I guess that CONCACAF would have been fine playing it on June 2nd, even if there was a Mexico team involved, if it was mm-hmm. played at a neutral site in the U.S. or, yeah. say, the crew hosted, that would have been fine. Right. But but to your point, because it's in the country of Mexico, that that's why the date was changed. There have been significant issues with candidates um, being safe um, during this election cycle for Mexico. Mm. So they need that security for Election Day um, that... Of course, you're going to need for a soccer match as well. Like you need for any major sporting event, you need security. Um, So it is going to be interesting to see how the crew does. I'm curious how early they go down there because I think that the stadium is 8,000 feet above sea level. Um, That is going to be a definite home field advantage for the for Pachuco. Um, But I mean, the crews played in Colorado and they've played fine. So hopefully they get to go down there early enough to train. Yeah. I, I think obviously at this point, the plans are still coming together, but you know, we, we've heard that obviously they're going to have to reschedule their original MLS match that was yeah. supposed to happen on June 1st. They also had one midweek leading up to that, that they're mm-hmm. trying to reschedule as well. So yeah. I, I think all signs at this <laughs> moment point toward them getting down yeah. there ASAP yeah. and adjusting to the situation. It behooves the MLS to give them some, da- some days to get ready and to potentially become only the second MLS team to win this tournament in the the newfangled kind of format mm-hmm. that it's in seattle is the only other team to have done it I mean, um that's i mean that's a really interesting great. thing if you like you get online and you look at all the winners of the Concacaf champions cup there are a whole lot of mexican flags next to these teams i mean they've absolutely dominated you know this competition through the decades right and uh columbus has a, a great opportunity it is and it's a point of pride um we're definitely gonna have coverage um, leading up 
to this big match, as well as, of course, MLS season still going on for the crew. So it's just um, we've hit the kind of big stride. We've called it the summer of soccer. Yeah. I think we're just hitting it like a month early, and that's okay. Um, <laughs> so right? I think we're all on board for this um, summer of soccer. So uh, stay with us um, here online on NBC4i.com for all of your Columbus crew coverage. And, of course, in all of our shows throughout the week, we'll be making sure to bring you everything that we learn and we know uh, about the team. But thanks for tuning in and go crew.